Oh, so I'm Greg Broadmore. I'm a studio director at Weta Game Shop, which is the uh, gaming wing of Weta Workshop. So uh, you folks are here uh, demoing a uh, Magic Leap uh, software product. Talk a little bit uh, about uh, seeing people experiencing your game. It's been great. I've seen a lot of smiles, which is really, really gratifying. I think we've made something really fun and, and silly and, uh, and at the same time really obviously really novel and innovative. You know, it's like there's nothing else like this out there. So it's exciting to see people's really sort of fresh reactions to this. And it, being on the cutting edge of uh, spatial computing, he talked about how important games are. Like, so throughout history, whenever we have a big jump in technology and computing, games are always there. And it seems like right now is a good example of how, in, in you know, whatever mixed reality or different products, how uh, games are such a huge important part of figuring out UI and uh, human interface uh, elements of uh, software design. That's so true, right? And that's, uh, Roni recognized that from the start. So when I st started working with Roni, it was about seven years ago, and he was just at that point with his team conceptualizing Magic Leap, he asked me to start work on a game almost straight away. And, I, and he recognized that games are actually a great way to shape a computing platform, right? Because games are all about UX, they're all about UI, they're all about interaction, moment to moment, and in so many different levels and layers. And that's inherently the problem of uh, computing. Like, how do you make it, how do you make the, ex the interface and the relationship with that interface natural and organic? So he realized that, and also, uh, games solve graphics, they solve physics, the lighting, you know, like, there's a myriad things that need to be solved for enterprise and for medicine and for any other number of things that games can essentially be the, be the battering ram for, if you like. It really feels like with Magic Leap and whatever other uh, competitors out there that we're at the very early days of this new kind of computing revolution. Like multi-touch has had its day with 10 years since you know the App Store was released. This really feels like a whole new place for software developers and creators to express themselves. Yeah, that, and that's why I'm in it as well. It's because it's new. I've been inspired by video games my entire life because of those jumps in technology. And I think that those shifts in technology, those uh, the thresholds are where the interesting stuff is, it's where the discovery is, and Magic Leap is the perfect example of that. Um, and so you get to look at the history of video games and computing and, and bring all those wonderful solutions that have been created there, but you also get to look in a new direction and go, because there are a ton of things that don't make, you know, that don't translate, and you, so you come up with different references. How is, the, how is this problem solved in the real world? So for us with mixed reality, you might look at things like a carnival or a theatrical experience or a store, things that involve attracting a person's attention or their literal interaction in physical space. Those are a great paradigms to use when developing mixed reality. So it's fun, you, you're not look, necessarily looking at the way you are developing for a box on a screen or a box in your pocket, right? It's a totally different way of thinking. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the universe that you've created, this world. What are some of the inspirations that you brought uh, to your demo today? Like the art style is very unique. It's, it's clearly there's like a teapot and the loading screen. Where did you get these ideas, this style uh, for kind of like, you know, it's, it's a multiplayer game demo that you showed. But it definitely feels like you enter a universe when you put on that uh, that headset. Yeah, that's kind of it's very intentional. We want it to be fun, you know, first and foremost. And those characters are larger than life anyway, and it just felt right. We put them on and they were real, and it was kind of you know. Or not, or we put them actually on. The first thing we did was take the characters from Invaders and just put them on your head, and that was a kind of a revelation. And then we got the eyes tracking, and then it just sort of realized that the fun was in making them larger than life. And I think the artist just really enjoyed that too and just got to take it to a new level and bring a lot more character to it. It's so expressive, like that's a, uh, that's, it's just, you know, being able to amplify those things that the player is uh, expressing themselves and dial them up, it's just, it's just enjoyable, so. There's, there's something super immersive about having like a mask or an avatar when you enter in like a, a new space, either online or whatever. And I think with whenever you put an HMD on your head, having like a persona that you embody, I think adds to the immersion. Yeah, it's like cosplay, right? And we all do this with the clothes we wear and the things that we do that we express ourselves. Um, what we're doing here, I think, is the tip of the iceberg uh, of the future of expressing ourselves virtually and digitally. Like, you know, uh, in the future, you will be able to show that. Uh, like, we here, here you, you pop in and suddenly you are Dr. Broadbot and your friend is the Moon Mistress, you know, or whatever. But in the future, that I think that points at us having a digital reflection of ourselves that's actually more literal and on our bodies and things like virtual pets and, uh, and other things that actually come with you. And those things could be different to different people, which I find really fascinating. I'm curious, because we're in the early days of this platform and this these platforms, if you want to call it that, um, what are some challenges that you, you, you reach when you're trying to uh, create a good experience or a great experience for players? 
Yeah, it's all challenges. That's the trick. And that's actually the fun of it too. Um, everything we jump into here, you, like I said, you're taking that legacy of, of video games that have solved so many different uh, design problems and input problems. And when you come in here, you bring all that with you and then you find that most of it doesn't work. And so like, it, that's been our experience of developing for Magic Leap from the ground up. It's like, and that's, like I said, the reason we jumped in. It's, it's an unexplored space. It's a pioneer, pioneering territory. So you, um, it's fun because you get to solve those things. So I think coming into it, it, it this whole medium attracts people that want to get their teeth into something new and exciting. Yeah. You know, I'm curious, uh, for new devs out there who are, you know, they look at the landscape of Steam and of the Switch and all these different launchers that are flooded with things, don't you think that a creative person could really uh, almost make a bigger splash with a spatial computing program. Oh, absolutely. And also it's just like so much, yeah, absolutely. It's a brand new pond, if you like, and so, you know, you get to come into it and be unique and uh, and uh, stake out some territory, potentially. And on top of that, it's, like I said, because it's unexplored territory, it's it's fun, creatively, which is the most important thing, I think, when you're, as a creator, is you, you want a bit of a blank slate, right? You've got some touchstones, but then you want to start scribbling and having fun. Uh, and so, and it's more personal. It literally is. It's not abstract on a box on the wall. It's it's happening to you. It feels more literal. Like I often say that word, it's literal. It's not. It's virtual, of course. These things are pixels. But it feels more literal, you know? And it's all, it feels more literal in the sense that you are standing here on the floor. You're in your own house, right? Or it, the, the Dr. Grawlbot is standing behind your table. The robot is climbing over your furniture. That's the literal difference, you know? It's happening to your space. So when you're telling a story, when you're building a fiction, that, I think that's super exciting for a creator and for a writer, like because you're getting to tell uh, events that are happening to that person, which is very primal. Yeah. You know, uh, just kind of about the platform in general, uh, being untethered, these uh, be, the the mixture of reality that occurs with these, it really feels that it'll always be more immersive than virtual reality because there's a suspension of belief that has to occur when you go into VR that doesn't exist with Magic Leap. Yeah, I'm glad you think that. That's great. I mean, it's, yeah, you're right. It, like I think there's a, we get the reality for free. You know, that's already there. And so the challenge as an artist and a creator is make your new experience, make it situate in that and make it feel authentic to that. Make it uh, respect the real world. Uh, and if you do all that, then yeah, things, you just, they feel more connected. They feel more natural. So is this a game that's coming out or is this a proof of concept? It's very much a proof of concept today. But um, it's bloody good fun, and so we're, I think we will be doing something with it.